Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely fantastic day. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. I do not know if I'm saying this correctly. I'm not sure if it's Gasseis. Uh, I don't assume they've called themselves Cac Ice. Uh, it is a bank, C-A-C-E-I-S, bank, one of the largest asset management firms within Europa, has recently been granted the license by the Financial Market Authority Regulator, known as the Autorité des Marchés Financiers, AMF, to provide crypto custody services within France. Per a press release, the Caseis, it sounds better than Cacais, uh, group's banking arm in France just received prestataire du service sur actif numérique PSAN status from the AMF. The new development serves as a green light for the bank to operate as a crypto asset custodian authorized to store users' private keys. You might not have been here a, a number of years ago. One of the, for some reason, largest hurdles within the cryptocurrency space was crypto custodians. Uh, up until that point, uh, we believed the only logical way to be a custodian was by holding your cryptocurrency yourself. It's the way that the blockchain works. We also knew of cryptocurrency exchanges. Cool. However, for some reason, uh, the only way that anyone got any kind of regulatory approval back in the olden days, the 2017s, 2018s, is if basically you found another company to be your cryptocurrency custodian while you also did cryptocurrency activities yourself. It has something to do with like uh, less risk tolerance in that. If I send my money to you and you send it to someone else and then it gets sent to some other company and then it ends up going to the final product, apparently that's more regulatorily better than anything. So now this company has received the thumbs up to be one of those things. It's worth noting that the bank is co-owned by Banking Behemoths, Credit Agricole, and Santander. In a press statement... The financial institution boasted of being the first in the league to be granted the PSAN status within France. Uh, this is normally because, I don't know. I mean, we've heard of a lot of other banks who were trying to do this before. Uh, I assume it did that a lot of other banks had already given regulatory clarity. Which they, no, 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 They did. Banks and governments have already given regulatory clarity. Uh, what, what, whatever the SEC is not doing, but I guess this has to do with receiving a piece of paper that says you can be a crypto custody authority within France specifically. So I guess that's why they're bragging that they were the first ones to actually get the paperwork. The press report reads, PSAN status enables Gaseus Bank to offer digital asset custody services to third parties and respond to growing demand from investment management companies and institutional investors, rich people. It is the first milestone in the development of an innovative digital asset custody offer that provides the same level of security as for traditional assets. And then it keeps going on, but that's not really that important. Quite popular news. I uh, have never heard of Caseus. Maybe I'm just simply not wealthy enough. Usually worth, uh, wealth management companies, uh, you, you gain access to them when you have a, a net worth of over, I believe it's like $50 million. So, you know, not quite there. Hoping to, you know, get a wealth asset management Caseus company. Anyway, the point is, cool. They they got the green light and, a, and for some reason that was major news. It and you know I I get it like it's not not big news but you know where's the where's the Charles Hoskinson said something weird news? Where's the where's the guy from Tron bought a burrito from a truck news? You know that's always those are always the popular ones. That's a a, a company was the first in France to get a get paperwork 
to be able to do stuff in crypto. I mean, it shows the you know the 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 growing interest in in the space. Whenever they whenever they give you that wink and they say that it is for institutional investors, it means very very wealthy people who are finally entering the space. Anyway, that's the bank news. And yeah, let's move on. Next up in what? That's crazy. HSBC, Hong Kong's biggest bank, is now facilitating the purchase and sale of, wait for it, drumbeat, it's terrible, facilitating the purchase and sale of Bitcoin ETFs listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. You heard that correctly. The country that told us back in January that they would be giving us uh, cryptocurrency regulations by the 1st of June, and then they did, is now allowing for, and also a little entry point in there. A couple of days ago, I, don't, I didn't have news about it. It seemed redundant. The government of Hong Kong announced that they wanted their banks to be more uh, forthcoming to the cryptocurrency market and make it, make it so that it was you know, easy for people to be able to enter into it. They said this to all financial institutions. We have rules and regulations, let people know what's going on and make it welcoming for them. And wouldn't you know it a couple of days later, uh, HSBC has announced that people will be able to purchase and sell Bitcoin ETFs on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. If only there was another place that went this fast. I can't, can't remember what they're called, but maybe one day they'll get there. Cryptocurrency exchange traded funds such as CSOP, Bitcoin Futures ETF, and CSOP Ethereum Futures ETF and Samsung Bitcoin Futures Active ETF. For those of you who don't know as well, like Samsung, like, you know, the, the TV people, uh, they're apparently one of the four largest companies in, um, in South Korea. And they kind of control everything. And we got news a year ago that they're not like looking to get into crypto apparently and i say this in the in the nicest way possible they're apparently like knee deep uh in it so yeah are all available on the hong kong stock market at the current time hsbc is the first bank in hong kong to provide crypto derivative products to their clients colin Wu, a well-known crypto reporter said that this move will expand local users exposure to cryptocurrencies within Hong Kong, he said, Scoop! HSBC, the largest bank in Hong Kong, today allows its users and customers to buy and sell Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs listed on the Hong Kong exchange and is also the first bank in Hong Kong to allow it. The move will expand local users' exposure to cryptocurrencies within Hong Kong. Uh, also, su surprising... Very popular news. I was, I was, I'm quite, I'm quite proud at the space right now. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if there's like some collective thing that's flowing through the air that everyone's smelling at the exact same time. But keep breathing deep, everyone. Make sure that the important news is the actual uh, news of the day. So yeah, we have heard many a time that there are a number of countries that have already allowed uh, Bitcoin futures and normal Bitcoin ETFs as well. Ethereum ETFs are quite rare to come by. They're not in the everyday news. It is expected that as we move forward, there are going to be a multitude of companies and countries who get into Ethereum ETFs once Bitcoin has kind of solidified itself as, you know, the ETF king, what have you. So wonderful news. It is a breath of, I dare not say fresh air because none of the air that we're breathing in is fresh anymore. It is a breath of air to see a country say that they're going to do something and they're basically going full steam ahead. So we have a lot of really crazy and weird Bitcoin price predictions and stuff going on at the moment. I would love if they came true, but I, I think, you know, I think we're moving in the right direction. We, we, we no longer have countries openly lying to us saying that they're going to be banning crypto it's now like full steam ahead with regulations but regulations also means you know it's legal and people can trade it and use it and there's no more uh idea of a ban anymore so uh once again keep your uh keep your eyes open and understand that all the rich all of 
the rich people are here. They've been here for years and I've been telling you. But as we get news every day and I keep showing you, just want you to all understand that uh, we will probably see the world's first trillionaire from the cryptocurrency market in the next, I give it by the end of this decade. So interesting times ahead. That's the HSBC is allowing people within Hong Kong to trade Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF news. And yeah, let's move on. In, you know, I, as, uh, David Schwartz, the chief technology officer or CTO of Rapple, and one of the original architects of the XRP ledger, has addressed the recent rumors surrounding Ripple's alleged plan to buy back 10 billion XRP tokens, roughly around 10% of all the XRP that's out there. Under the current price, it would be worth around 5 billion US dollars. So, a uh, little bit of a history lesson within the cryptocurrency space. And also, I guess, for stocks as well. Companies, this is a very common thing. Companies within the stock market tend to do something called stock buybacks. It's the idea that it, it, it could be based off of manipulation and or them actually believing something. The general idea, wink, is that... We as a company believe our stock is undervalued and or there's too much stock on the market and or whatever example there might be. We are going to buy back our stock at a lower price. It's 40 cents. And then when it goes up to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 dollars, we will sell it back onto the market, making a gigantic profit for our shareholders. This is the original idea, one of the ideas of a, of a stock buyback. At some point... Uh, rumors began to circulate about the people from Ripple uh, buying back tons of XRP. For clarity, and this is how I know that people are like new to the market. It's not wrong that you're new to the market, but it's more of a, you know, uh, where we heard years ago that Ripple is the company actually buying back large amounts of XRP. If you can tell me why, they're buying up tons of XRP. I'll give you a digital cookie. I don't have it on me, but I'll, I'll find a way to send you one. For those of you who already said it, it's because remember when I kept on saying years ago, I was like, the US SEC is not treating Ripple correctly. They should go overseas, go anywhere else where they're treated properly. And guess what they did? They, we heard that they were uh, dealing with Mexico and Thailand, and they have 15 countries within Africa who are using XRP. This news seemingly does nothing to the price, which lets me know that people aren't paying attention and aren't listening to a gosh darn thing that I'm saying. But they said because they have so many international clients that their clients are actually very interested in using XRP. So they, as they don't have access to a, an egregious amount at any given time, as they do uh, have from the, uh, what do you call it, from the escrow that ends up going back into the escrow afterwards for another five years, they buy back XRP on the market and then sell it back to another company who plans on using it. At some point, like, like, like that's actual news. At some point, that got warped into this idea that Ripple was going to try and buy 10% of all the XRP that's out there in an effort to bring up the coin's price. As you might have imagined, this news spread like digital wildfire because I guess it was appealing for people to think that this company would be trying to make other people richer. Uh, this is a common thing theme within finance. You will, this is, listen, he, hear my words because this is a thing. You will often have someone who was not very wealthy or well off who is trying to make bakuda bucks. They're trying to make a lot of money. And what happens is, is they hear the, the lie or the rumor from somewhere else or something that makes them believe that they are going to be richer. I have about 35 different examples, but I can't and won't say them because if I did, I know people would be quite angry because it's a lot of people out there uh, in the cryptocurrency space who believe in these figures, uh, who are just liars and scam artists. However, the idea is that they'll do something that makes me rich and then I'll be better off. 
I've told you all a multitude of times. These higher up people, these people who are millionaires and bahillionaires, they only care about themselves. Understand that we are, if nothing else, we are along for the ride as they get richer. And we find the way to line our pockets as well, making money from the cryptocurrency space. The rumor was is that Ripple, the company, because they wanted the community to succeed, was going to buy back $5 billion of Ripple's own money. Uh-huh. Hey, see, see, now you're getting it. To buy back XRP. I'm sure that this is, this is not even speculation. I am certain that Ripple wants XRP to succeed. Why? Because I, I, I would guess that the, the people working at Ripple probably also hold XRP. I assume they probably have a large portion of XRP and are waiting for a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, dollar, 12 dollar XRP so that they can uh, profit accordingly. Uh, but usually the sphere of influence tends to not go much further uh, than the actual company itself. What have you, if you catch my drift. In a recent tweet, Schwartz clarified the situation, stating that while Ripple does engage in XRP purchases, he was not aware of any specific buyback plans at this time. Moreover, he highlighted there were no official sources supporting these rumors. You want, do you know how you make sure that XRP is a security? You as the company Ripple purchase a huge portion of these coins. When you are a company and you buy back your stock, it is because you hold it and it is already declared a security by the SEC. Ripple buying back or buying XRP in general to sell to companies is one thing, but buying it to directly influence the price of a coin? I... I, I'm wondering every day, and I and, and I don't assume it will ever end, uh, where people get this stuff from. So apparently right here, someone wrote, um, yup, agree. Joel Katz, any validity on this? He said the same exact thing I just told you, no official sources. Apparently a lot of people uh, were mentioning this on Twitter. Once again, it spread like digital wildfire. And then a lot of cryptocurrency news outlets began to talk about it as well as if it was fact. And that leads us to where we currently are right now. So, if at any point you heard that Ripple was going to be buying $5 billion worth of XRP, that is a lie. The silver lining is that uh, they hold XRP, so they do want the price to rise. At some point, the price will rise and we'll all make money together. Uh, but the idea of I don't some so much of the so much of the news recently I I I I scratch my head because I I just wonder where where this where this where this uh, where this where this is all coming from. That's the nope news. And yeah, let's move on. In it's it's been a while news, but. I have I have many questions. A revival blueprint for the Terra Luna Classic blockchain ecosystem has been proposed by a group of six engineers who are calling themselves the Six Samurai. I used to be an avid, and I mean, I think avid isn't the word, player of a game called Yu-Gi-Oh! And there were characters in that game called the Six Samurai. So imagine my surprise uh, reading that these people, I'm going to assume, name themselves after Yu-Gi-Oh characters. This is usually the point where someone in my comment section uh, takes out their keyboard and or is typing on their phone and they tell me that Six Samurai is a reference to a 1970s movie or a book that was written in like 1847 that I have no recollection of and therefore... You know, some, it, it, it's always something like so many times people like have weird things in the cryptocurrency space and they're like, no TMI, I'm telling you it's from this. And I'm like, I don't, it's not that I don't care. My only recollection of the Six Samurai 
is a Yu-Gi-Oh card. They said that they aim to restore the glory of Terra Luna and remove any traces of their infamous founder, known as Do Kwon, uh, who's been in the news a lot recently. A lot. And it's been for, like, nonsense. Like, I think he bought a cheeseburger and people were, like, riled up. It's a whole bunch of things going on. And and I say this because I understand that people see things online and it gets them, you know, heated, riled up, they, you know, antsy. Uh, but understand, you are not Do Kwan. Do Kwan are not you. Uh, he has no impact on your life. You will never meet him. Stop worrying worrying about Do Kwan and what's the other guy? Chup, Chup, Chupacabra, the guy with the the guy from FTX. Uh Sam Bankman Freed. Stop caring about these people. Like just go on with your life. Like there are so many other important things you should be worrying about when we're on the cusp of the largest bull run that we've ever seen, as opposed to worrying about uh, Do Kwan and, and what he's doing somewhere in some other country. They said we're all passionate Luna Classic holders and community members committed to reviving and decentralizing the blockchain, as we believe that's where the true reward is for everyone. In another uh, weird twist that also made me cringe, uh, apparently one of the pseudonymous engineers has named himself Bilbo Baggins. See, see, see now you want to see? This is why I was talking about Six Samurai being in Yu-Gi-Oh! Six Samurai... One of the engineers is named Bilbo Baggins, and the other one has named himself Solid Snake. If you know, you know. The Six Samurai outlined a $116,000 governance proposal for a quarter three 2023, pledging part-time efforts for the Terra Classic community if given approval. They said, we've assembled this team from experienced industry veterans with the aim of bringing value to the Terra Classic blockchain so that we can help push this chain where it deserves to go. Um, they say we also believe in open source, decentralization, and DeFi above all else. So this is another one of those situations where I think I've become so jaded from life. Uh, it is very difficult for me to, this is me, very difficult for me to believe that people who are part of a cryptocurrency company project um not that they don't mean well for everyone but it's kind of like i'm having like eos flashbacks uh for those of you who weren't here eos was a uh, is a cryptocurrency company project that raised four billion dollars and did jack diddly squat after that um so when i hear that people are trying to uh, bring back the old Terra Luna classic, and I compile all the news that's in my head. It basically sounds like they're the. For those of you who don't know, it is believed that they can get Terra Luna classic back to a dollar per coin, and given the, the the current value, you can get millions of them. And therefore, if it goes back to a dollar, people, you know, everyone's making fourteen, thirty five, one hundred and twenty five million dollars. That's kind of one of the general ideas of it whether that'll come to fruition who actually knows but when i hear stuff like oh we're gonna bring bring it back to where it was before it's kind of like we're gonna figure out a way to burn a whole bunch of coins to make the value go up so that we can all become richer not a bad thing but you know i'm 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 always um skeptical when i hear people say that they're for decentralization so this was also quite big news we have had three Four times where we've been in this situation where uh, someone has announced or that they're going to be reviving or recreating or bringing back the former days of Terra Luna Classic. Do Kwan, not in that sentence because he also did announce it before he got into troubles. So, cool. If it works, I'm sure there will be hundreds of thousands of people who will be quite excited uh, for it. Uh, Terra Luna Classic and oh, ooh, remember Terra Luna Classic and and Shiba Inu? They used to be the daily news coins. They were in the news constantly. We haven't heard from them in a while, so I guess maybe this is the you know the revival of of it all, if you if you will. That's the Terra Luna Classic uh, Renaissance bringing it on back. Six Samurai 
Bilbo Baggins and Solid Snake News. I wonder what the other ones are called. I like I I almost need to know what the other four samurai are called now. Like I my 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 interest is sky high. If one of them, oh my gosh, never mind. I was gonna say, imagine if one of them named himself Gary Gensler. I don't think that'd be too popular. That would not no that that, that would not be <laughs> would not be a not be a popular name. I do hope. That you've all enjoyed. Why am I screaming into the microphone? I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.